All right, so here's the review to the semester exam. Um, so for part one, pretty much what you need to do is you need to look through these parent functions and you need to know the names, the equations, the graph and the domain and range and the transformation equations, those actually do help a lot. So make sure you're just looking through those. Um, that's the whole first front page. And there's really nothing for me to go over, so just make sure you are doing that. <clears throat> All right, for the second page, um, the first questions are talk about domain and range. So domain is from left to right, range is from bottom to top, and always least to greatest, right? So um, in terms of semester exams, you could see those in uh, interval notation, set builder notation, or uh, inequality. Me, I'm gonna do all my answers in interval notation just because there's not enough space to do all three. Okay, so for the domain, um, when I look to the left, I see an arrow, which means if it looks at the x-axis, if I look at the x-axis, it's going to the left, and you can see it is continuous all the way through to this arrowhead on the right side, which means your domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So all real numbers. Um, for my range, <clears throat> starting from the bottom, the lowest part is right here. That's a closed circle. And if I follow both directions, they both have arrowheads going towards positive infinity. And the starting point here is negative 1, negative 2. This is negative 3. So negative 3 to infinity. Uh, notice it's a closed circle, so I have a bracket. Infinities always have parentheses. For the second one, as you can see, this one goes towards negative infinity and positive infinity for the domain. And for the range, it's the same thing. This goes towards negative infinity on the bottom, and the top goes towards positive infinity. So again, the domain and range for this one is all real numbers. All right, for the third one from part, from number one, um, starting at the left, we have a closed circle. If you continue to draw this all the way through, at the end, you have an open circle. So it starts at negative one, two, three, negative four. And it stops at one, two, three, four. Closed circle is a bracket, open circle parentheses. For the range, the lowest point is right here at negative one, two, three. And the highest point is this open circle right here, which is one, two, three, four. And I think I counted that right. Okay, so closed circle is a bracket again, and open circle is a parentheses. All right, so that's the domain and range for the first two problems, uh, for or for the first problem. For number two, it says that a bag of popcorn is placed in... A bag of popcorn is placed in a microwave to cook, which graph best represents the number of pops over a period of time. So if you put in a bag of popcorn at the very beginning, there's no pops and it increases. So first off, the only one that actually starts with no pops is letter C, so that has to be the answer automatically, but just to verify. So usually when you start popping, it starts off slow and then it picks up to a high point and then it slowly comes back down to where it doesn't pop anymore because it's completely done. Um, so the answer for that one is definitely C. For the next question, it says, for number three, find the range given the specified domain. So domain, these are X values and we're gonna plug them in for this X right here. So we have two times, our first one is negative two parentheses squared plus three. And then our second one is two parentheses zero squared plus three. And our last one is two parentheses three squared plus three. All right, and then you can just work these out either mentally or in your calculator. That's up to you. Um, first one is going to be 11. The second one is going to be, looks like, 3. And the last one is going to be 21. Um, so I'm going to put these in numerical order. So it's a list of numbers. So 3, comma, 11, comma, 21. All right, let's take a look at number 4 here. So for number 4... It says find the domain given the specified range. So this time I'm giving you y. So we're going to plug it in for f of x and you're going to solve them, right? So for the first one, we have one third x minus one is equal to negative one. Then one third x minus one is equal to five. And then one third x minus one is equal to nine. So for this one, we add one. One third x is equal to zero. Multiply by the reciprocal of three. And x is equal to zero. For the next one, same process, add one, this equals six, and then multiply by the reciprocal, x equals 18. 
The last one is going to be the same process. Uh, so x is equal to, let me see, um, negative 9 plus 1 is 10. And 10 times 3 is 30. Verify that. Add the 1, 9 plus 1 is 10. Multiply the circle, so my answers are 0, comma, 18, comma, 30. And those are my y values. Or sorry, my domain, my x, my new x's. Okay. For the next problem, it says, Susie tossed the ball into the air. What is a reasonable domain for the amount of time that the ball is in the air? Okay, so for this one, um, when I'm looking at these answer choices, a couple stick out to me already that it can't be true because we're talking about time. Uh, all real numbers goes to negative time, so therefore you can't use that one. Same thing with this one. This one has a negative 10, which we can't use. So the only one that's even uh, reasonable is C because it's from 0 to 10, which does make sense. Number six, John has a savings account in which he places at most $30 each month. If he started the account with $100, what is a reasonable range for the amount of money in the account at the end of four years? So this one, um, so first off, he starts with $100. So my starting point should be $100, not all real numbers and not zero. So the only answer is C. All right, for transformations, uh, sorry, you can see that. Um, for transformations, um, this is your A value, and this is a K value. So A is greater than one, that's a vertical stretch by six, and K is negative three, so we go down three. Uh, again, this is your A value, this is your K value. If A is uh, negative, then it reflects across the X axis, and your K value is positive three, so you go up three. This is an H value, so it's the opposite of what we see. It either goes left or right, so in this case it goes right four. This one right here, you have H and you have K. So if this was right four, the opposite, then the opposite of that would be left five. And this goes down four. Okay, so those are your transformations. A, H, and K. Left, right, up, down. So vertical stretch, vertical compression. All right, on to the next problem, number eight. So for number eight, it says the graph of... Uh, y equals f of x is given below, uh, right equation for the graph. So we see it's transformed from the first graph on the left to the next graph on the right. So I'm just going to pick a point, and I probably pick this point right here because it's easy to know the coordinates. It's negative 1, positive 1. So I'm going to graph that over here. And you can see it's been transformed to this point over here. So I'm just going to count my transformations. It went right 1, 2, 3. So right 3. Then it went down 1, 2. So I'm looking for an equation that went right 3 and down 2. So the only one that does that is letter C. Right 3, down 2. <clears throat> All right, for number 9, it says solve the following systems of equations using any method. Um, my chosen method here is going to be using the calculator, the menu 3, 2 function. So let's go ahead and turn on this calculator, and let's get this to a graph page. Or sorry, a calculator page, so new document. Add a calculator. Um, so menu three, whoops, menu three, two. Um, I have three equations. And right here, once you get to this point, you're just gonna type them in the way you see them. So the first one is x plus y plus z equals three. The second one is negative x plus three y plus two z equals 12. And then my last equation is x equals 4z and I'm not doing anything just typing them in once I press enter it gives me my answer here and I'm just going to copy it down that's my x y z values so I have negative 12 over 17 66 over 17 and negative 3 over 17 all right for letter b I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, menu 3 2 three equations and we type it in for x plus 5y plus 3z equals 11. x minus 3y plus z equals 6. And then my last one, negative 2x plus 6y minus 2z 
equals negative 12. All right, let's hit enter. And now, so this problem right here, if you notice, it gives you C1. And what C1 pretty much means is that um, it has infinitely many solutions. So IMS. If it was one solution, it would give you the answer just like I did here. No solution literally says no solution found, so that's pretty obvious. But this one right here, if you see C with any number, C1, C2, C3, C4, then it's infinitely many solutions. All right, for number 10, it says a scholarship award was given to the student who has who was awarded the most points, and a different number of points are given for each first, second, and third place vote. The table shows the votes for the top three finishers. Find the number of points awarded for each vote. All right, so first off here, we're going to define the variables. Um, in this case, the variables I use are going to be x, y, and z. Um, and I usually use the last sentence to figure out. It says find the number of points awarded for each vote. So first one's going to be the number of points awarded for first place. Then y is going to be the number of points awarded to second place. And then z is going to be the number of points awarded to third place. All right, and I like these equations because um, they're actually set up when they're in tables like this. The first column is actually all your x values, then your y values, z values, and then your constants, what they equal. So 23x plus 8y plus 1z equals 141. And notice all the equations are going to be the same way. You just can't forget the coefficients. All right, so for the first equation, 23x plus 8y plus z equals 141. 8x plus 18y plus 3z is equal to 100. 1x plus 3y plus 5z is equal to 24. All right, from here, we're going to just type this into menu 3, 2. So menu 3, 2, three equations. And let's go ahead and type it in. So 23x plus 8y plus z equals 141. Next equation, 8x plus 18y plus 3z equals 100. And the last one, x plus 3y plus 5z equals 24. And obviously here I can tell I made a mistake because these should be whole numbers. Uh, so let's just verify. So if this happens, make sure you just go through and verify you have it right. 23x plus 8y Plus, ooh, there we go. You see that there? Um, so you take a look. So that's why you got to be careful when you're doing these. Um, I see right here I put an X instead of a Z. So just go back and fix that. And that should fix the problem. Let's see. There we go. So my answer is actually 5, 3, 2. So points awarded for first place was 5 points. Points awarded for second place was 3 points. And then for third place, it appears you got 2 points. All right. So once again, if you ever make a small error like that, just make sure you go through, verify that you type it incorrectly. And if you didn't fix it, if you did, then that could possibly be the answer. All right, for the next one, we have um, a word problem dealing with money. Uh, so Michael has a jar full of change with nickels, dimes, and quarters that is worth $5.15. He has twice as many quarters than he has dimes. There are 49 coins in the jar. How many of each coin does he have? All right, so again, we're gonna define the variables x y z x is going to be the number of nickels y is going to be the number of dimes and z is going to be the number of quarters all right for my first equation i'm going to talk about the total number of coins there's 49 so x plus y plus z is equal to 49. so the number of nickels plus the number of dimes plus the number of quarters is 49 coins total uh, next, I'm going to talk about the money. So we know a nickel is worth 5 cents, so 0.05x, plus we know a dime is worth 10 cents, 0.10y, plus a quarter is 25 cents, so 0.25z equals a grand total of $5.15. And then for our last equation, it says he has twice as many quarters and he has a dime, so he has more quarters. So quarters is z, so z equals twice the number of dimes, so 2y. All right. 
Then we go ahead and type this into our calculator using menu three, two. And let's go ahead and type this in. So I have, first one is X plus Y plus Z equal to 49, 0.05 X plus 0.1 Y plus 0.2 plus 0.25 Z equals 5.15, and then Z equals 2Y. And we have 30, 31, 6, and 12. Now, 31 for me represents my number of nickels, and that's over here. So that's 31 nickels. Uh, y represents my number of dimes, which is 6, and then my quarter, sorry, 6. So be careful there. <laughs> and then my quarters is Z, which is 12. So 31, 6, and 12. All right, for number 12, it says solve the following system of equalities by graphing it. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how to do this by hand. I'm going to show you how you could type it in the calculator. So for this first one here, uh, we have negative X plus Y is less than 3. So to solve this, I would just add X to the other side. And I get y is less than x plus 3. So here, our y-intercept is at 3, so 1, 2, 3. Uh, my slope is 1 over 1, so up 1, right 1. And I'm just graphing it along here. Now, from here, I look at the inequality. There's no equal bar, so it's a dashed one. And this says less than. Less than is below the line. So there's that graph right there. And then for my next part... For x plus 2y is less than or equal to negative 2. So first we start by subtracting 4x to the other side because we're going to solve for y. So 2y is less than or equal to negative 4x minus 2. Then we divide all parts by 2 to isolate the y. So y is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 1. So my y-intercept is at negative 1. My slope is negative 2 over 1. So I go down 2 and to the right 1. And I just repeat that pattern until I fill up my whole graph. And then after I make my line, I want to look at the inequality. So I would see that it has an equal bar, which means it's, the line's supposed to be solid. And less than, you shade below, so my region should be in here. So this is my solution set right here. Any point on the solid line up until where they intersect with the dashed line is a solution. Any point in the double shaded region is a solution. Dashed lines are never a part of the solution set. So if you wanted to graph this um, in the calculator, let me go ahead and show you how you can do that here. Um, so we're gonna open up a graph page, so number two. Now here what you wanna do is you wanna delete the equal sign, and you're gonna pick number six relation. Now once you do that, you can literally just type in the equation the way it looks, so negative x plus y is equal to three. I'm gonna arrow down, and then I get four x plus two y is control equal to, less than or equal to, negative two, and there's that one there. Now I noticed in the other one, I put an equal sign, I didn't change the inequality, so negative x plus y is less than, so you pick the right sign, and there you go. So you can take a look at my graph and compare it. Um, you'll notice the dashed line, you'll notice the solid line. Now another thing we can do to really make sure we have these points right is you can add a grid, and the way you would do that is menu two, six, three, so menu, two for view, six for a grid, and three for a lined grid. And then from here, you can see that our points will match if you wanted to check it that way as well. And also, this is a good way to uh, test points whether there's solutions to the system of inequalities or not. All right, on to the next page. All right, so for numbers 13, 14, and 15, what you're going to do here is you're going to see whether this is a part of the solution set or not. So we're going to start with 0, negative 2. We're going to graph that point, and we're going to see if it falls in the system of inequalities solution set. So 0, negative 2 falls right here on this solid and dashed line. Now, it would satisfy the solid line, but the dashed line is not a part of the solution set, so therefore 0, negative 2 is not a solution uh, we can graph 1, negative 4, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. It is in the double shaded region, so yes, that is a solution. And then 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. We can see that definitely doesn't even fall anywhere close to it, so that's not a part of the solution set. All right, number 16. 
we're talking about on what intervals of x is f of x constant, increasing, decreasing, positive, and negative. So let's start with the uh, whole constant increasing and decreasing. So if you think about a constant from left to right, it remains the same. It remains The y values remain constant. They don't change. So that's a horizontal line. Increasing from left to right, your graph goes up. Right? So the y values increase as x increases. On what intervals of x is it decreasing? The decreasing from left to right goes down. So as the x values increase, the y values decrease. Uh, now positive and negative is a little bit different, so I'm going to go over those after I do this. So where is this graph constant? Well, let's see if we can just really see it. So this is decreasing. Uh, this is horizontal, so that's constant. This part is increasing. And this part right here appears to be decreasing as well. Okay, so the first part that I see is constant is this part right here. And it's from here to here. Now it does say on what intervals of x. So the values I give must relate to x. So this first one is constant from negative 3 to negative 1. And we want to use parentheses on this. So no errors there. For where is it increasing, it appears to be starting from negative 1 and stopping at positive 2. So negative 1, comma 2, use parentheses. Now, on what intervals of x is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing in two parts. It's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3. Use parentheses. Union 2, and this appears to be 6. 2, comma 6. And I'm going to use parentheses all the way through. Um... Now, when we're talking about uh, positive and negative, well, we have the x-axis, which acts as zero, it's neutral. And anything above that is gonna be positive, and anything below it will be negative, right? So here, when I'm looking for positive and negative, so positive starts with this arrowhead going towards negative infinity, and it stops right here at negative four. Now, I don't include negative 4 because negative 4 is on the x-axis, and that's the value of 0, which is not positive or negative, so it's neutral, and we show it's not included by putting parentheses on it. Union, because once we get to that point below, it goes negative because it's below the x-axis, and then once we get to this point right here, again, at 0, it becomes neutral, and every part above it is going to be positive, right? So we see all this positive right there until we get to the value of 6. Now, 6 does have a closed circle, but since it falls on the x-axis, which is neutral, 0, we don't put a bracket on it. The last part we have is a negative, and as you can tell, it starts from that neutral point at negative 4. And it's all negative, negative until it gets back to that point of 0, both in parentheses, because once again, x-axis is neutral. All right, for number 17, um, this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put this into the graph, right? Because I could graph it, but I'm going to just type it into the graph and just kind of see if I can count my points, okay? So we're going to go into the graph. We're going to delete the equal sign. We're going to select number 6. Um, so my first equation is 8x minus 2y. Control equal is greater than 4. Arrow down. Y Control equal, less than or equal to, negative one-half x, and minus two. All right, I'm going to add in my grid, so menu two, six, three, and now I have my grid, and now I kind of kind of see these points here. Let's just move this out of the way real quick. All right, there's that one. Let's hold and grab that one, move that out of the way. All right, now let's actually move the graph up a little bit so we can see it. So we can see that double shaded region. Let's just move it up a bit so we can actually see it. All right, first point to give me is negative four, one. One, two, three, four, and positive one. That's definitely not a part of the solution set. Three, negative seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, this one actually definitely is a part of the solution set. Now I'm gonna see if there's multiple ones. I don't think there are, but there could be. So negative two, six, so one, two, up six. That's not even, not even on the graph. And then one, two, three, four, up two, same. So my only answer is letter B. All right, for number 18, all you're doing here is you are graphing the constraints. Again, this could be done in the calculator. Um, so let me kind of do that in the calculator. That way so I can just get the vertices and find my feasible region. So this one is called linear programming. Um, so it's 
an extension of system of inequalities. So let's go ahead and put a graph, delete the equal sign, number six for relation. So we have x is greater than or equal to zero. And then we have y is greater than or equal to zero. Then we have x plus two y is less than or equal to 16. And then we have five x plus y is less than or equal to 35. All right, and now we can see our darkest shaded region is right over here, so right there. And again, I don't, I just don't like these things. They just feel like they're in the way, so let's move those out of the way over there. There's one, there's another one. Let's grab this one. There we go. And there's another one and one more. So, the problem I see with this already is that the numbers are going to be kind of hard to read. So I'm going to add that grid menu 263. And from here, I can kind of get the points easier. So my first point is uh, 0, 0. My next one, if I count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. And then we have 1, 2, 0, 8. And then my last one is, it's one less, so it's six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, five. Okay, so here are my four vertices, right? Now if I can graph these real quick. So we have zero, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have zero, eight. We have seven, zero, and then we have six, five, six, five. And again, uh, the vertices is actually where I find my minimum and maximum values. And inside of this, the shaded region is called the uh, feasible the feasible region, right? On my solution set. But we're mainly looking at our vertices because that's going to give us the minimum and the maximum values. Now, what do I do with these vertices? Well, we're going to plug them into the objective function, which is right here. C equals 4x plus 5y. So the left side are all my x, x values. The right side are all my y values. So... For the first one, 4x, so 4 instead of x, we put in 0, plus 5 times 0, which is going to be 0, right? So x is 0, y is 0, plug them in. For my next one, 4 times x is 7, plus 5 times y is 0, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 0 is 0. For the next one, 4 times x is 0, plus 5 times 8, which is going to give me 40, plus 0, which is 40. And then last, we do 4 times 6, which is 24, plus 5 times 5 is 25, which adds up to 49. So my minimum value, my lowest value is right here, 0. And my max value is 49. All right, and this concludes part one of the review.